All right, Sunday morning, Hanny and I finally got out of bed at about midday. I'm spewing because I haven't raced today, which is a bummer. And it would have been a would have been good to get down there and have a bit of a race, but uh, as usual, we're going to go for breakfast, try and get some personality, have a coffee, and then uh, see where the day takes us. Really. Um, I'm going to be doing some work on the bike later, so uh, we'll run through how to change brake pads for carbon brake pads on my bike. Alright, post coffee. Ding ding, ding ding. It's all right. Thank you. Oh, you're our neighbours. And I'm trying to beat Hannah home. <laughs> Just going to change the brake pads, the carbon brake pads on my uh, Bianchi, because they're getting a little bit worn now, and um, and I'll show you. If they get too worn, you can really damage the rim, so I'll go through that now. You can see how worn the brake pads are, and when we close the calipers, the screw down the bottom is just about touching the rim, and if that starts to touch the rim, it'll wear through. So, so it's really important to change your brake pads regularly, because um, especially carbon brake pads, they wear and uh, if you're swapping, if you, for example, if you've got training rims where they're, they're uh, aluminium and you swap them over, the aluminium pads will, uh, sorry, the aluminium rims will wear through the carbon pads a lot quicker. Uh, in terms of the NV 6.7s for a race and training wheel, you know, I find them perfect. I mean, they're really a triathlon wheel, but uh, once you get them up to speed, they're fine. I, I, you know, I find them absolutely perfect. They I mean, really, what do you want out of a good training room? You just don't want them to buckle, and you want them to be fast for races. They're fast for races, and these have never buckled. And I've gone over all sorts of terrain on these. I've gone over dirt. I've ridden over cobbles uh, on the curved cycling, um, the curved night belgy. And uh, these things have stood the test of time. I've never had to true them once. So absolutely fantastic rims. But let's go through uh, changing the brake pads now and uh, hopefully it helps you guys out. So to change the brake pads over, you'll just need a two mil Allen key. And then I've got the, uh, the Swiss Stop brand uh, of brake pad. You can see here, if you look very closely, see they're specifically for carbon. Also, another important thing to take note of is you have a left and a right brake pad, so make sure you put the, the uh, right brake pad on the right side. Once you screw one of these little screws in, that's what stops it from slipping back and forth. Probably the best thing to do is to take the wheels out first and that way you have more space to work with when you put the brake pads in and out. And as we put the brake pad in, you can see here this little divot lines up perfectly, slides in perfectly in line with that screw. So obviously now if we compare the two brake pads, you can see that's got a lot more depth than this version over here, which will protect the rim from this little screw, okay? We never want that touching the rim. And you can see if you look on this side, there is a lot more distance between the brake pad and the screw. Okay, so one thing you will need to do is now that you've got um, brake pads with that are thicker, you're going to have less space between the two brake pads now. So you're going to have to let out the, you can see when that comes down, we let that out, we get more girth, right? But this screw is also, you turn this to allow more space between the brake pads. So you're going to have to let that out. If that doesn't create enough space for you, then you're going to have to undo this Allen key here and uh, let the cable out a little bit so that you can just get these 
a little bit wider apart and fit your wheel in. So that's it for how to put the brake pads in. It's just a little tip for today. You know, obviously you want to protect your carbon wheels, so don't be lazy. Make sure you regularly check your brake pads and change them regularly. All right, another quick tip as well. If you want to take out your rear wheel, the best thing to do is always put the chain into the 11. And, um... and as you're taking the wheel out, just grab the derailleur and just slightly pull it back like this, okay? And that way when you put the wheel back in, it'll, you can simply line the chain up with the 11 and it'll go in perfectly. If you randomly have it somewhere on the cassette, you won't know where you took it out. So you can see a little bit of maintenance on your bike can go a long way to saving your equipment and uh, the bike's looking as new. The other thing I wanted to quickly mention is that I use a feedback stand. This stand is probably the best thing I own in terms of bike stuff. Just allows you to do so many little things. You can just quick release, you can just lock this in, you just turn that knob and then you quick release that and it lets it out really quickly. So absolutely fantastic stand, I love it. Feedback and um, highly recommend it. Very stable down the bottom here, so great stand. Annie and I are just venturing out of the house just to get some sun, just to get out and about. We've practically been in bed all day, so. is this thing? Hannah reckons it looks like a transformer. It's like an awesome little machine though. So we're gonna get all that in there. We can do it. I've got the difficult task of carrying some stuff. I've got two bags in my hand. I'm filming with one hand and I'm riding far out. I'm just about to crash. And I've missed, and I've missed my turn off. All right. I think that's the end of the vlog for today. Chat with you guys soon.